All right, so here is the 1973 Compact 2 made by the company Hunter. I can't find a lot of information about them. I think they're only produced two types of trailers. This was one of the two versions and it was designed to fit inside a standard size garage when you put the pop top down. Not only will it fit into a garage and only take up one garage space, it can be pulled uh, by pretty much any vehicle, not just car, not just SUV, but um, you know, Volkswagen Jetta like my wife has. Um, never weighed it, but they say it only weighs about 600 pounds. Assume that's dry weight before you load anything into it. You really don't feel it uh, behind your vehicle. Certainly not, you know, I have a very capable Toyota Highlander six cylinder, but I've also very easily pulled this with a very underpowered four cylinder um, Saturn View SUV. And so let's do a quick walk around here. You've got propane tank in front right there. Got trailer light hookups. Get this little pop-out fiberglass awning. Got sliding windows with screens. This was some venting for the refrigerator. There's a Dometic fridge in there which I took out. So it really didn't have adequate ventilation to keep it cold enough. And um, with all these high performance coolers, you'd have way more space with those. They keep ice for three days pretty easily. All right, so some hookups here. You've got, um, you've got if you've got city water hookup, you can hook that up right here on the right. Um, and the water exits the camper, that would be right there. Inside, I think you've got about a 12 gallon tank for fresh water, which you just fill up right there with a hose or some other type of external tank. You just And then um, you want to let the water out of the tank very easily. You can turn that crank down there and it'll just come, come right out. So that is the outside. Uh, construction is fiberglass. Like I said, super lightweight. Very easy to pull. Let's take a look inside here. When you come in here, so you've got a three burner stove. Uh, right now there's a pump faucet, it doesn't require any power at all to pump that. It's a very popular style of uh, faucet there. Got a little hood there. You can open up a vent for a little ventilation when you're cooking. I've got to see a light there on the left. Uh, that's battery powered on the left here and then on the right that would be if you're plugged into 110 AC power. You got tons of storage down here. That's one thing that's that we really love about this camper is all of the storage. We've never run out of space. We've always had extra space. So this is where the fridge was and we have not regretted taking it out. Um, we've got a cooler there. Uh, we've got a bigger cooler also. Sometimes we have, we have a longer trip, but usually just bring this cooler if it's just a few nights. Um, keeps everything nice and cold. Uh, this is the little tiny battery that powers everything. I'll provide more information on that later. Got room for hats and water bottles and luggage as you see there. I've got a table in there right now, and um, that converts over to a bed. Very comfortable sleeping. You don't feel the cushions or the seams or anything like that. We just uh, throw sleeping bags over top of that. You could certainly have more padding. Don't really need it though. Again, more storage underneath here. Also got a 110 outlet down below there. There's also outlets on these lights here. Let's see if I can sneak back here. Alright, back here in the sleeping and eating area, you've got uh, another AC powered light and another outlet in that light. You've got a carbon monoxide detector, very important because we've got a uh, gas stove and also heat in here as well, which we'll take a look at. You've got another light right here that's plugged into the battery, plenty bright between 
these two lights, the two battery powered uh, that go off the main battery to light this place up very nicely in the evening. All right, so down below here we have the Olympian Wave 3 catalytic heater. It only took about 20 seconds to pop it on there. Um, otherwise it just stows in the cupboard below and um, it doesn't take up too much space walking through there um, and you can still get to the bathroom and the reason I went with the catalytic heater is that at higher altitudes some of the other heaters like the buddy heater I guess don't work so well um, due to the lack of oxygen higher up catalytic heaters apparently work just fine there's a couple heat settings on there so it doesn't get too toasty warm. I was a little concerned um, that it would be too hot and I was also concerned about there would be some um, safety issues installing a heater. Um, it's nice that there's no open flame with this style of heater. Um, and uh, again, we've got a carbon monoxide detector. If anything were to malfunction, that would let us know that there was an issue. So it's worked great for us for the few times that we have used it. All right, very simple bathroom setup here. We just got a porta potty that we add uh, some chemical tabs to, or those uh, enzyme type uh, drop-ins um, with a little bit of water, and you know it's got a, a manual pump flush on there. Um, I was really skeptical about it. It works really well, um, and. Um, the lighting that you've got in here, this is plugged into the battery main, and you've got another light in here. It's just a AAA tap light up there. Just for some reason, in case you're you know, doing some work on the trailer and got the battery somewhere else disconnected, it's nice to have an extra light in there. And so my wife and I are pretty small people. We are able to get both doors closed without a problem. If you're a bigger person, you could face this toilet outward, and then you could just you know, angle these doors like so, uh, perpendicular, and have a little bit of extra privacy. So, while it's not a huge bathroom, it's really nice to have something in, in the middle of the night or not have to, if you're not by any other bathrooms, um, it's really nice to have this extra convenience. And it works for us. I pulled the cush cushions back here to access this. Otherwise, you can just flip the cushions up in place uh, to get to all this extra storage. Um, but I wanted to show you how much extra storage there really is. Um, so this is three uh, bays right here where you've got, on the left, you've got fresh water tank and some extra room in there. Uh, the back one is all storage. We've got a screened-in tent, um, folding camp chairs. Um, a camera tripod, all kinds of extra stuff. Um, we've got sleeping bags in here. We can fit three pillows in there, extra blankets to keep warm. Um, and then around here is where you're going to have some of your, your plumbing, your gas lines, um, you know, minimal trailer wiring, things like that. Out of the way, so there's plenty of storage um, in addition to all the extra cupboards and so forth. I'm going to open this one up, for example. This is, uh, we call it our pantry. I put these shelves in here. Um, got slide out Tupperwares for lots of dry goods. We've got some extra kettles and pans and, um, you know, paper plates and utensils and so forth. And got some extra hiking backpacks and hats and uh, things like that. So, in addition to all the other pull out drawers, there is just ample storage in here. If you do off-grid camping like we almost always do and you don't have access to AC power, you've got this really handy Bowdens battery power station. Now there aren't a lot of battery demands. There's a couple lights inside but we also like you know charging uh, you know, cell phones and um, there's an AC power you could plug in um, to that as well. I'm just going to pull this up, the information up my phone here. I can be able to see this. But uh, so this is a 10 year battery life. Let me, first of all, let me tell you what it is. It's a um, 
This is a lithium iron phosphate battery, the same battery that they use in electric cars. Much better than all the other battery stations that I found. 2,000 recharge cycles, 10 year battery life, um, 166 watt hours. Um, there are bigger, more powerful batteries, but again, this will last for a couple days without, well, several days I'm sure, for what we use it for um, before needing to be charged up. Um, and you've got options for recharging here. If you can, at home, you could plug it into the wall. Um, this is actually for plugging in uh, 12 volt uh, devices. If you want to, you're driving around, want to charge it, this would be the correct end to plug into the battery here. Um, but if you're out there for several days and you need to recharge, there is a 100 watt uh, micro crystalline solar panel. If you've done any research on solar panel, these are the style to get. Uh, these are not the flexible kind that are a little bit more portable. This is the hard kind to put up with the uh, harsh Arizona sun, but it does store in the uh, bathroom of the camper upright and takes up very little room. It's very skinny. Um, so right now it is plugged in. It's actually, you can see indicating right there, it's blinking. It's actually generating power. You wouldn't need a solar panel this large, uh, like a hundred watt solar panel. Um, but on days like today, where you know, you've got a partly cloudy sky, um, you're going to be pulling in, um, be able to collect more sun power um, instead of a smaller one. Um, so I went big. Again, with 100 watts, going to recharge it more quickly than the s smaller types. And again, uh, when it's cloudy outside. Very simple setup. Um, let me show you what it replaced. This is the old battery that we replaced. It's an interstate deep cycle battery. I was curious. I threw it on the scale. This thing weighs over 40 pounds. It's kind of a beast to lug around and it's kind of wasted weight in a camper. Before this I threw the Bowdens uh, real portable battery on there, super small, obviously much smaller, um, weighs less than five pounds. So this is a pretty efficient setup. I never had to take the solar panel along, um, but it's there if you need it. If you're going to be out there for a couple days and you have some high draw, you're going to be charging everyone's cell phone at the campsite. It's nice to have those options. So the reason we purchased this camper, uh, one of the first times we were out tent camping, uh, we were camping way off grid, walking uh, way off the road and having to bump into a mountain lion and uh, made us both a little bit uncomfortable to be out there uh, popping a tent and camping in some of the places that we camp um, in just a tent um, instead of a hard shell um, body fiberglass camper like this. So we looked at a lot of different styles and um, happened to find this uh, rare gem. Um, and uh, the other thing too um, that we were looking for is that being that the you know, when the weather's really nice during the day you got about up to a 40 degree temperature swing here in Arizona with desert nights and uh, that can get pretty cold so we were you know camping in the low 30s um, which is a little bit chilly for tent camping um, and with this you know it's hard shell all the way around when you close that top uh, which we sometimes do on really cold nights um, and run that heater and um, even with the window cracked for the needs of the heater um, there's uh, plenty plenty of heat um, you can set it to your desired temp um, and keep you nice and warm um, and get a good night's sleep and um, this is definitely a head turner you get um, a fair amount of questions about this um, and even compared to the newer compact campers that are available today, um, I think this beats it for features and for weight, and those things are getting pretty uh, ridiculously expensive. Um, you know, well over $20,000 um, for even just small campers that you could pull with your car. And there's not a whole lot of options uh, to begin with. So, pretty neat. Um, the 
the old vintage camper meeting some of the newer technologies, battery technology, solar technology. Um, but for the, um, the uh, few times that we've gotten a chance to take this out, this has been pretty amazing fun. Um, very, very simple um, maintenance, just kind of uh, takes care of itself. Pop it, pop the top, and in uh, you know, just a few minutes, you've um, got the chairs out and magazines, and we're um, just enjoying the outdoors, which is the whole point of getting this. So again, this is the 1973 Hunter Compact 2. Thanks for watching.